oldest of the three, their only daughter. Daddy lived his life to the fullest. You could always count on seeing a huge grin on his face. He loved to laugh. My mama, our mama, he called her my precious. To this day, she's still so beautiful inside and out. My daddy loved my mama. Daddy was the perfect husband for her. One of his greatest gifts to us kids was his example of love for our mother. He had many talents, too many to name. He loved the game of baseball, and in his baseball days, he pitched and played shortstop. I never heard of him being much of a bench warmer. That was pre-marriage, however. He became a great bench warmer. Except this bitch morning was near wherever Mama was shopping. <laughs>
I have ever known. What a blessing that he was our day. I am proud to say I'm his daughter. Sure, we all have our faults, but as Brenda McDonald shared with me a couple nights ago, to her, Ernie Jr. was the nearest to perfect she had ever known. Miss Brenda wrote me also and said, and I quote, Words are not available to me that properly describe Irving Perkins Jr. You know, the things that have always meant the most to me were things that were pure and simple. A pure, simple message brought millions of people to the feet of Jesus. I guess when I think of Irving, I think of a pure, simple man. Not simple in intellect, for he was extremely wise. But he was uncomplicated. What you see is what you get. And what you got was a heart full of love to anyone that came in contact with him. He was always concerned about everyone and their happiness, as well as their heartache. His priorities were as they were meant to be. God first, family next, then friends, neighbors, nature, and all of God's creation. Yes, I guess pure is the word I chose to describe him. I choose to describe him. I was Irving's co-worker a sec and secretary for well over 20 years. And if you knew Irving, he would share his family, community, and feelings with you, and it didn't take long to become attached to him. He and Martha and their family became family to me. I often refer to him as my big brother, in our Fort Pope office, with Irving in charge, we discussed religion, politics, movies, vacations, <laughs> food like fried pork chops at the truck stop, <laughs> and lots of things that made his employees want to do a good job. I once said that if Irving could would have asked me, I would have tried to pick the Fort Pope up and turn it over for him. He was a great boss and had the respect of everyone we knew. When he arrived at work, he had come down the hall whistling. I can see that. It sure made for a good day, Miss Prince said, to work with him. We all know that there was only one perfect person, but in my opinion, Irby Perkins Jr. comes pretty close. I want to say thank you, Lord. It, it has been my honor to have known such a great man. Miss Brenda, thank you for that work. I received this from a friend of mine. I won't share her name only because I didn't have a chance to ask her if it was okay, but this is what she had to say. I wish I could be there to say how much my entire family loved your daddy and to put my arms around you and hold you just for a second. Your dad was such a great man to so many people. Lori, when dad was in a coma and my grandma and my mom had a head-on collision and they were all three in ICU, your dad was the one that showed up at my college to pick me up and take me home. He was the one that baptized me. He married me. He was at the hospital when my son was born. And I could go on and on. And I know my brothers and my mom and dad would too if they were there. Our little Savage Fork area will never be the same. In recent months, my daddy has suffered like many of us will never know. It hurt my heart to see his hurt. But I want to share with you that he was a man of God. And he went to the Lord in good times and bad. Sometimes he would curl up his knees to his chest laying in bed and recite the 23rd Psalm until his sad, heartbroken feelings passed. I find comfort in knowing that my
my daddy knew where to turn. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Daddy was so optimistic always. If he was going deer hunting, he just knew he was going to get a deer, and he always knew we were going to win the ball game. Daddy was so optimistic, always. If he was going deer hunting, he just knew he was going to get a deer. And he always knew we were going to win the ball game. Always optimistic. And even though he was suffering on the inside, he was optimistic. He was so smart and so analytical. He'd say, I'm just about over this. I'm about 95% well. And he believed it. And we wanted him to be back to his old self. And he wanted to be back to his old self. On Thursday of last week, after he had experienced a very restless night, the night before. He told me as he was walking, which he often did, especially when he wasn't feeling real good, he would walk and pray. He's always been a praying man anyway, and he shared with me that he stopped and he looked up to heaven and was praying harder than he had ever prayed before. He said, Lori, I ask God to have mercy on me and to take away these feelings inside of me. And afterwards, he said, he had such a peace that came over him. He couldn't explain the whole experience. He told me, Lori, I felt I had angels watching over me. And since that day, for several days, he had spoken of the peace that had come over him. Because it felt like, he said, that he had given all his burdens to the Lord. And it seemed like, seemed like to us, he was getting better. He even said, I'm getting, he said he was getting better. We all had plans. He was going to dinner with Gail and Uncle Link and Uncle Mike on Tuesday. He was coming to my house on Wednesday. Thursday, he was heading up to Russ's and then on to Arkansas to play music with the Thompsons to play bluegrass music. He had good days and bad days sometimes. And it broke our heart to see him so. But I personally was so grateful for the peace that he seemed to have. Only I thought that he was talking about peace. Like peace here on earth. 
for what I didn't know was really, we must have been talking about the real peace, ultimate peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, the kind of peace we all want. That is my comfort. Where do I find the strength to even stand before you today? Even though we miss him terribly already, and my heart is broken that my daddy is gone, I am so comforted. I have no doubt that he is resting peacefully now in the arms of Jesus. I know daddy meant so much to so many. His positive influence on others was far reaching. We all have only one chance on this earth to do good. I believe that we have been blessed to be a blessing. My daddy, rest his soul. He is gone. But I believe that you wouldn't be here today unless you care about him or you are here today in support of the people he loves. Irby Perkins Jr. has left a legacy and the way we can honor him is to pass it on. I've always wanted to get to heaven. But I have a greater reason now to want to get there. When my work on this earth is done, I want to hear those sweet words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Daddy.